Hi, I'm Dave from Boinaband.com, and today I'll be showing you all the effects that Kong has to offer. So we'll get stuck in straight away, as per, open it up with the show drum and effects. And first things first, we're going to look in the effects one slot at noise and tone. These two aren't strictly effects, they're called support generator modules, because presumably they support the drum modules by generating some sounds. This one generates purely noise, as you can hear, the pitch changes the frequency content of that noise. Attack and decay are the envelope options, so you can make it kind of fade in or very sharp, depending on what you want. Reso is resonance, it sets the resonance amount of the noise around the center pitch, so you can kind of generate a tone. Check it out. Kind of a weird one, that. A sweep sets the upper start pitch of the sweep range. And the sweep range is also affected by velocity, so the higher up it is, if we do a really quiet note, not much change, but harder. You can hear it's kind of sweeping down to a lower pitch. Yeah, it works best when it's combined with resonance. Click defines the level of the click in the attack of the noise, so We'll get rid of this resonance. Just that sharp initial sound. And then level, as you probably guessed, changes what level of the game you're on, because Kong is also a game. I beat it yesterday, the end boss was pretty hard. Tone allows you to generate a tone. Really good for bass drums especially. You can get extra bit of punchiness under there and similar options with the attack and decay and the hit type definitions there. But then we also have the bend options, bend decay, sets the decay time for the bend if we take it up so we can hear properly and take it the bend. Defining how long that bend is. Shape sets the tonal character of the sound, so from less to more harmonics, so if we bring it down we might be able to hear that a bit more easily. Nice and simple, a bit more harmonically interesting. And there, we're currently on level 100, it's a pretty long game. Another thing to notice, a few of you were asking whether you could automate things within Kong. Well, you can automate some of the things. For instance, in this effect, you can automate the pitch and decay, but you can't automate any of the other parameters. You can only automate two of each of the effects, I believe, for example, in the compressor, can't automate amount, can automate release, can automate attack, can't automate gain. It's kind of random as to which ones are which, so you might be able to do what you want. But there's so many pads that it's quite easy to set up a load of different ones if you want to change parameters. So, we've got our weird sound there. Let's put in something in the drum module and play with the actual effects. Compressor is going to be the first one we'll look at. We've got the amount, which sets the sensitivity of the compressor. So a higher amount will make the compressor more sensitive and react to weaker input signals, and a lower amount, just the opposite. Not much done at all. Then you've got attack, which sets how fast the compression should be applied. So we've got more of a limiting there at lower amounts, and then that lets pretty much the whole snare through. So if we bring that there, we can hear a sharper click to the start of the snare. Released sets how long it should be before the compressor lets the sound through unaffected again. And then makeup gain just boosts the volume if you've lost any volume from that compression. Next up, let's check out the filter. Again, nice and simple. All these effects are very, very simple, but that's kind of useful because it keeps things tidier. Because it could get very messy if there were knobs there all over the place. I'm not going to comment on that. Anyway, we've got frequency. Just defining what frequency we're affecting. Low pass, band pass, and high pass available. You can't automate that. You can automate the resonance and frequency in this one. Band pass, high pass. Let's keep it on band. And the MIDI trig EG sets the amount of the MIDI controlled filter envelope. So if we take the amount value up, it kind of bends the frequency 
and then the decay time defines how long that takes. So that's a nice little option down there. Next up, let's have a look at overdrive. And if I turn the drive right up, instant GABA. Resonance just makes it nice and harmonically interesting. Size sets the size of the virtual resonance chamber from small to large. And then model is kind of similar to the Scream 4's body options. You've got A, B, C, D, E. Depending on what kind of horrible noise you want. I feel a sudden compulsion to make a song with that. But I'll resist and carry on with this video. Next up, the parametric EQ. Only three simple options. Frequency defining what you want to get rid of from the sound. Let's go back to the snare so you can hear more easily. Gain. See, I've just cut that frequency there or boosted it there. And Q just working as the bandwidth. So a thin bandwidth or a wider bandwidth. Rattler. This one's very good for snares. It adds the effect of a snare attached to whatever sound is fed through it. So it can kind of really beef up a snare. Yeah, lower snare tension values result in more pronounced tones. The tone just affects the frequency content of the output signal, kind of like the tone knob in Redrum. Decay sets how long it will ring for. Tune sets the snare tuning. This is a really weird sound, by the way. And then level just affects the level of the overall sound. Ring modulator. Let's get the bass drum back for this one. This one takes the input signal and multiplies it with an internal sine wave signal. And you can get this really weird metallic sound. You can also modify that internal sine wave, much like you could on the... Uh, filter and then you just define the frequency of the internal wave that you're multiplying this sound by and the amount it's multiplying it. Next we've got room reverb. Nice quick reverb. This one's pretty good to put on the uh, bus FX. This seems like a good time to tell you about it. You can route sounds to the bus FX so if we put the reverb in here instead and turn off this one you can see up here in this drum's little screen, virtual screen, we've got the bus effects knob here. So we've got a dry snare, snare with reverb. And that's very easy to do. Just dial it in on any of those. Each pad has their own options. And then you've got the master effects where you could apply, for example, a nice little bit of compression to everything. That's a bit too much, but yeah. Each drum module has two effects you can apply to it for that specific pad, and then you've got these two as well that you can use. Now, we're coming close to the end now. Let's see what else we've got. Tape echo, very simple echo. You've got your feedback to make it longer. And the wobble, which sets a tape speed wobbling effect. It kind of produces a wobbling pitch of the signal. Frequency sets the change in frequency of the delay repetitions, so you can make it become more filtered as time goes on. So lower ones, nice and low pass filtered, higher ones, high pass filtered. And the resonance for the delay repetitions, you would hear that one went really high frequency there. And then dry wet to define how much you're adding. Last but not least, we've got the Transient Shaper. This one's a nice little dynamics processor, which produces a result that could be compared to that of a compressor. But as opposed to a normal compressor, the Transient Shaper affects the signal's attack for the most part. So it makes it really good for making a sound cut through the mix. So if we take the amount up, so it's affecting it a lot, so we can really hear the sound, and turn the attack up slowly, we can hear there's a much sharper attack on that. Whereas if we take it right down, 
to much less prominent attack. And decay just defines how long it takes for that to go back to the normal volume. And there we have it, all those different effects. Now I'm pretty much done in Kong. I'll do one more video showing you some of the different preset patches, and then I guess it's up to you to see what you can do with Kong when you get your hands on it. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you next time.